What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, I need to tell you about Enel. OBO5 tournaments have started over in Japan. And we've got a, well, it is a winning Enel list. It is, it's actually the runner-up from the Junior Friendly Cup. High-class division, etc. This is still a legit Enel deck that did very well over in Japan. And I'm not claiming this is the very best Enel list you're ever going to see, because it's an early list, and early lists are never the best list. They get refined over months that they're legal. But I'm absolutely telling you that this is an early Enel list, which has gone and done very well in a large tournament, and we need to go and have a chat about it, because Enel really does look like one of the best cards, one of the best leaders we've got. And this seems to be backing it up. And I know a bunch of you are going to start wanting to test this. This is a great list with which to start. So what we've got is Anel, a 5,000 power, 4 life mono character. Incidentally, that is weird because mono characters should have 5 life. But on your opponent's turn, once per turn, when the number of life cards becomes 0, you add a card from the top of your deck to the top of your life and then trash a card from your hand. It's really good. When you run out of life on your opponent's turn, once per turn, you get an extra life. And that's basically what this deck does. It stays alive. Oh, you thought you got rid of all my dot. Oh, wait a second. I've got an extra life here. Ha 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 ha. Etc. An L looked good. And an L does seem to be very, very good. So what are we playing it with? Well, starting off then, we've got ourselves the one cost Charlotte Pudding. Yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. This is the one from OPO3. One cost, 2,000 power, counter plus 1,000. And on play, look at the top four cards of your deck. Find a big mum pirate other than Charlotte Pudding or a Sanji. Add it to your hand. Classic kind of effect we've seen over and over and over and over again in pretty much any type of deck. It goes and searches for a particular type. In this instance, you are going and searching for big mum pirates. Which, incidentally, is foreshadowing where this deck is going. Now, we also have Struzan coming in here. Another one cost, but you do have counter plus 2,000, which is a very, very, very big deal. You need that in your deck. And on play, you can trash a card with trigger from your hand. There are a bunch of cards with trigger we are playing in this deck, so that's going to be all right. We should be able to find one. And then KO up to one of your opponent's characters of a cost of one or less. So you can either bump little characters off the field, or you can use it as a counter plus 2,000. Either way, this is pretty gosh darn good. Now we've got Charlotte Galette. Two cost, 2,000 power, counter plus 1,000 blocker. Nothing more or less than that. It is a cheap blocker. You need blockers in your deck. This is good. Only playing two of here. Every other character, incidentally, until we get to the big ones, they're all four ofs. This is a two of. Now, Charlotte Paris Barrow is a card with which we're all familiar. It sees a huge amount of play. Three cost, 5,000 power. It's got a trigger that lets you discard a card from your hand and play it. I told you there'd be a bunch of trigger. But on KO, you look at the top three cards of your deck, find a big mum pirate, add it to your hand. Rest of the cards go to the bottom of your deck in any order. I told you this is going to be a big mum pirates deck. You've got Charlotte Pudding to search out your characters at the beginning. You've then got Charlotte Perispero to search out your characters as well. This should not really surprise anybody. We are, even though it's an Anel deck, we are still <laughs> very much here going for big mum pirates. Feel free to be upset about that. It's just the way it is. Now, Charlotte Brule is another blocker. It's only a thousand power. But it's got a trigger that lets you play it for free. No discarding a card from your hand. No, no, nothing else. Just a blocker. And between Charlotte Brulee with trigger and Charlotte Galette with just being a two cost, we've got some very cheap, easy to get. And to be fair, Charlotte Brulee is only a free cost. This is some easy to get out cards here. This is very, very nice indeed. You are going to have some blockers on the field quite nicely. Now, Capone Gang Beige is coming in here. Free cost, 3,000 power, counter plus 2,000. So we have another counter plus 2,000. And it's got a trigger that up to one of your opponent's leader or characters cannot attack during this turn. It's not a play this card for free like we often see. However, it is still very much a good trigger. And it's going to stop one of your opponent's characters attacking this turn. It's awesome. Yeah, fine. There will be times this comes out as your opponent's last attack for the turn. And that's actually super annoying. But there are going to be other times you get to stop something attacking, which was going to wreck your day. 
And we got a lot of trigger coming in here. This is a very, very, very useful trigger. This is one we like very much indeed. Now, we've also got coming in here a lovely playset of Charlotte Amond. And have a card which sees a bunch of play. Free cost, 3,000 power. Counter plus 2,000. Another counter plus 2,000. They're useful. And activate main once per turn. You can trash the card with trigger from your hand. And I've said there are a bunch with trigger. There are a few more we've yet to see. And you rest up to one of your opponent's characters of a cost of two or less. So, like we saw a minute ago, either you've got this for the counter plus 2,000, which is super useful. Or you can rest one of your opponent's characters of a cost of two or less and kind of take them off being a threat for a minute. Or maybe rest them so you can attack them. Either way, this is good. Now we've got a playset of Sanji coming in. Do bear in mind, even though Sanji isn't Big Mum Pirates, can be searched with Charlotte Pudding. And if you've read the manga or watched the anime, you'll understand the reason behind that. This is the one that came around in OPO4, and it's a blocker. 5,000 power blocker. But it's got a trigger that lets you trash a card from your hand and play this card. And bearing in mind, we've also got Charlotte Brulee that is a blocker that can be played with a trigger. And that is two different blockers that can be played using trigger. That is legitimately awesome. And then we have the one token card from OPO5 that isn't a Nell. Obviously here, the fact that it is a Big Mum Pirates deck means you're not going to be seeing much from OPO5 because OPO5 doesn't have much... Well, it just doesn't really have Big Mum Pirates in. That's not where yellow goes. What it does have is it's got Gadatsu. The actual Sky Island card. It's not a Sky Island deck. It's just a, basically a big mum deck with an L. But you're also playing Gadatsu here. Five cost, 6,000 power on play. KO up to one of your opponent's characters of a cost equal to or less than the number of your opponent's life cards. This is awesome. Now, obviously, as the game goes on, this gets worse and worse and worse. But you can decide when you take your life a lot of the time. And then Gadatsu can potentially go and get a 5 cost or, you know, a little bit lower as the game goes on. Very useful. The, the lone Sky Island card we actually see coming in here. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we do see Shirahoshi coming in here. This is the one from OPO3. Not, incidentally, a big mum card. 5 cost, 0 power. But it's got a trigger that lets you play it for free. And then when you play it, you draw free trash too. Terrible as an attacker. No other skills, but good as draw power. The fact that you can play it for free as a trigger card and then draw cards when you play it, that is the whole point. And remember with One Piece, if you've got enough characters out, if you've got the maximum number of characters on the board, you can just replace characters that are out. It's not like a game like Pokemon where when your bench is full, your bench is full. Being able to play this for free and get a bunch of draw is genuinely awesome. It's why we see it in yellow decks. And then we get to the big ones. We've got Charlotte Linlin, the starter deck. Charlotte Linlin, 7 cost, 8,000 power. And when you play, your opponent either has to trash the top card of their life or let you take the top card of your deck into your life. Now remember again, we've got a lot of trigger in this deck. And the more trigger you've got in your deck, the more likely it is that putting a random card on the top of your deck on top of your life is going to give you a trigger skill when your opponent takes a life. It's one of the reasons yellow has both recovery and lots of trigger. Because recovery puts cards on top of your life, which means that ain't going to be taken as life, which means the trigger is going to come in. You're giving up more than five life a game, which means those triggers are going to be very, very useful. Plus, it's an 8,000 power character, which is good for smashing. Now, I did say the lone OPO5 card. I obviously meant other than an L, because as well as the Anel leader, we do have the Anel character coming in here. Now, this is 7 cost, 7,000 power with Rush. And if this character would leave the field, you can trash one card on the top of your life instead. Which is nice. Bearing in mind, the leader Anel here says on your opponent's turn, when the number of life cards becomes zero, you add a card from the top of your deck to the top of your life. Again, means more likely you're going to hit trigger, which is great. But it means that if your opponent would be knocking out your Anel character, as long as they don't have a Luffy on the field, you can't do it if there's a Luffy on the field. Again, read the manga, watch the anime, that will make sense. And then you just trash a card from the top of your life. 
But then you immediately put a card back on top of your life with the leader. And you've lost nothing. It's not really a Sky Island deck. We've got an L leader. We've got two of this an L. Only two. And then the playset of Gadatsu. But that's all you need, ladies and gentlemen. That's all you need. Now, going back to your big mum pirates, one last time, we've got the big Charlotte Katakuri. Eight costs, 8,000 power, and on play, put up to one character that costs eight or less to the top or bottom of its owner's life area face up. So either you get rid of one of your opponent's characters, which is annoying you, or you get to put one of your characters on top of your life as a bit of recovery. That's good, ladies and gentlemen. That's good. And then we finish off, no events here, we finish off with Yamato. Yamato is one of those cards from OPO4 that everybody is loving. There's a very good reason Yamato is one of those cards from OPO4 that everybody is loving. Nine costs 9,000 power. So we got lots of little blockers coming in here, which is lovely. We got a lot of consistency and trigger and all of that. But we've also got some beef at the top end of this deck list. We've got a total of 12 cars that have 7,000 power or more. That is good. And what we've got is on play, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost equal to or less than the total life of you and your opponent. Then if you've got one or less life, add a card from the top of your deck to your life area. So 9,000 power character can bump one of your opponent's characters, and you've got a bit of recovery potentially as well. That all adds up to awesome. Here's the deck list as a whole. It is very much big mums. If you've been playing Charlotte Katakuri, you're going to recognize a lot of the cards from this list. But then you're bringing in stuff like the Anel leader, like the Anel character, and all of a sudden, this is making it a very, very good deck. In OPO5, it is early in the OPO5 meta. I have to stress that. But this is looking very, 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 very good. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you need to know. And now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think of Anel as a deck. Tell me if you're going to be playing it. Tell me if there's something else from OPO5 you like a bit better. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at Lawasi. That's where we talk about One Piece and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.